Now when valuing a cap floating rate bond, keep in mind that this is equals to the value of a straight floater minus the value of the cap, which is embedded in the bond. Now the cap is exercised if the coupon rate, okay, which is normally based on LIBOR, is greater than the cap rate. So in this case, let's say we have the interest rate 3 below and we are asked to find the value of a 3-year annual pay floating rate bond with a coupon of 1-year LIBO that is set in arrears and it's capped at 7% and assume the par value is $100. Now, for this, of course, uh, at the maturity of the bond, there will definitely be a payment of par value, which is $100. The only thing is we have to determine the coupon. So the coupon is always determined in arrears. So let's say at time zero, okay, the coupon rate is uh, the interest rate is four percent. So this will determine the coupon in time one, which should be hundred dollars times four percent. So that will be four dollars. And then the and this is uh, below seven point five percent. Okay, so there's nothing. Uh, there's no cap there. And then at time one we have seven percent. So that will determine that in the next period the coupon will be seven times uh, seven percent times hundred dollars, and then here this would be five dollars, and then uh, for ten percent at time two determines that the coupon in time three will be ten percent times hundred dollars, that's ten dollars. Okay, so if you add in ten dollars here, and then for eight percent, okay, the coupon will be uh, eight dollars. So we're not done. And then for 6%, the coupon in time 3 will be uh, $6. Now, take note that for this case, uh, we have for any rate that is above 7.5% or $7.50, we have to cap it at $7.50. So in this case, for this $10, we have to cap it at $7.50. For $8, we have to cap it at $7.50 as well. Okay, for $6, we don't have to. Then uh, for the rest, $7, $5, and $4, these are all below $7.50. Right, so there's nothing else to adjust, so we will then discount the cash flow back to the previous period. So now we have 10750 discounted at 10%. So that will give 97.727. Okay, and then uh, for this case, if you discount back, uh, we will also get this, uh, we will have 107.5 discounted at 8%. So the value will be equals to 99.537. And then uh, for this case, 106, okay, so it, uh, if you discount it back, it will still be $100, okay, since it's uh, the same, the coupon rate is based on the same discount rate. Now, after that, we will discount this cash flow back, okay, uh, these two values back to the previous period using a 50% weightage. So the value at time one using a 7% rate will be 0 0.5, so that'll be 0 0.5 here times 97.727 plus 99.537 okay and then we add in uh, seven dollars here okay plus seven and then we discount it at seven percent based on the previous periods rate so that will give a 98.721 okay and then uh, for these two okay we we'll discount them back again to get the value here which is 0 0.5 times uh, times 99.537 plus 100 plus the coupon of $5 okay, again then we discount it at 1.05 so that gives us a value of 99.78 and then uh, lastly we discount these two values back to time zero using 4% so the value here will be based on 0 0.5 times 98.721 plus 99.78 then we add in the coupon in time one, which is $4, and then we discount it at 1.04. So that will give us 99.279. So this is the value of the cap floater. Okay, and then if you compare this against the value of the, just the straight floater, so for the straight floater, it will always be equals to the notional or the par value, which is $100. So the difference between these two will represent the value of the embedded cap. So if you take 100 minus 99.279, so that will be equal to 0 0.721. Now, 
what happens if there is a spread on top of the coupon? So let's say we have another floating rate bond that's three years annual pay with a coupon of one year LIBOR plus 200 basis points with a coupon cap at 9%. So let's assume the par value is $100 here. So in this case, what we need to do is with the interest rate three here, we will have to uh, increase it by 200 basis points. So from 4%, it becomes uh, 6%. From seven, we increase by two, so it becomes 9%. Then we have uh, 5 becomes 7%, and then uh, 10 becomes uh, 12%, and then 8 becomes 10%, and then 6 becomes uh, 8%. So when we determine the coupon, okay, we will then take uh, 6% as the coupon uh, in period 1, which is uh, $6. Okay, and then we have 9% uh, becomes uh, $9 okay, in period 2, 7% becomes uh, $7 in period 2, and then uh, the 12 percent okay uh, becomes 12 dollars okay in time three ten dollars and eight dollars however we have to be careful because the coupon is capped at nine percent so anything above nine dollars or nine percent will be capped down to nine so in this case instead of twelve dollars we will then cap it down to nine dollars okay ten dollars will be capped down to nine dollars and of course, $8 remain, and the rest uh, is all 9 or below, so we will not change that. Alright, so uh, with that, we will then uh, add in, the, of course, the par value. There's a par value of $100 here for each of this. And then we'll proceed with the similar discounting, but the discounting will be done with the new LIBOR plus uh, 2%. Okay, so when we discount back, so there's $109 here, so we discount back $109, okay, using the 12% rate, so that... 97.32 okay and then uh, we have another $109 here this is discounted at 10% so that gives us 99.091 then the last one is uh, $108 discounted at 8% so that goes back to 100 alright so then we'll proceed to discount it back to time 1 uh, using 9% so the value here will be a 0 0.5 multiplied by 97.32 plus 99.091 then we add in the coupon of nine dollars you uh, discounted at nine percent so that gives us 98.354 then uh, using the seven percent rate we discount these two values back so the value will be 0 0.5 times 99.091 plus 100 plus the coupon of seven dollars then we discount it at seven percent so that gives us 99.575 then lastly we discount it back to time zero using six percent so the value of the cap floater here will be 0 0.5 multiplied by 98.354 plus 99.575 plus the coupon of six dollars then we discount it at 6%, so we get 99.023. So if we compare the value of this cap floater against the value of the straight floater, so the, value, the difference would be the value of the cap.